Hey everybody, this is Milana Lushinsky and welcome to day four of the Go To Expert Challenge. I can't believe it's day four. I feel like I just started this yesterday and we have over 800 people actually participating in the challenge, um, many of whom are actually very active. And today's uh, assignment was really interesting for me to watch what you guys are saying because I was playing with different ideas of how to, uh, you know, how people position themselves as the go-to experts. Uh, and not only that, but specifically at the center of influence in their industry, because there is an art and, and science to this, right? Um, hi, Madeline. Yes, um, 800, uh, 800 people, over 800 people, actually, at this point. I think people are uh, watching what, what is happening and signing up for the challenge. Um, as I'm running the challenge. So this is really cool. I'm excited to see that much participation. So um, first of all, let me say that right before I got on the on the uh, Facebook Live today, I found a copy of this book. And um, let's see if you can see it. I'm actually, uh, yeah, it's called Multiple Streams of Virtual Event Income. And it's written by Lisa Barnes. And the reason I have it, I actually have 50 copies of these books in my walk-in closet. The reason I have so many copies of it is because I wrote the foreword, the foreword by Milana Lashinsky, and the um, afterward is by Andrea Lee. And what's interesting is that, um, you know, we both participated in uh, an event. We both organized an event where we were talking about virtual events. And so the reason that I, this, um, I picked up this copy today is because, I, you know, somebody asked me, a friend of mine asked me, Milana, why didn't you write this book? You invented Telesummit. Why isn't your name as the author here? And I will say that when I first led my Telesummits years ago, um, it didn't feel like, um, you know, a book that I should be writing. I don't know why. I wish I had, actually. But, hey, I got the second, uh, the next best thing. I wrote the forward to this book, and I just wanted to share this with you because virtual events are awesome. We're going to talk a little bit about virtual events um, today. So, hi, Julie. Um, hi, MJ, Madeline. Uh, <laughs> yes, it should have been you. All right. So... Um, I'm finally catching you live, Julie. Yes, yes, it's it's very difficult to accommodate everybody's time zone. So I'm doing my best here and trying to figure out when people are mostly awake um, in Europe, in America, in Canada, East Coast, West Coast. Um, I know that some people are actually waking up earlier in Australia just to catch some of the US-based uh, events. So I apologize for that. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you know, Facebook Live allows us to uh, keep the live stream running even after the live stream. I am so excited, Julie says. Awesome. So, Hela, welcome. Julianne, you're doing good. Yay. Awesome. Let's talk about um, day four assignment. First of all, as I was reading your um, comments yesterday, we were talking about visibility. And a lot of people were saying that visibility feels um, pushy and um, salesy. And, you know, many people who were raised to be, you know, humble, modest, these people are struggling with visibilities. Um, I actually looked it up. Some people believe that pride is the deadliest sin. So how do you build a business with that kind of thinking, with that mindset, right? Uh, also, if you're an introvert, Visibility especially takes more effort. But what I said yesterday, I want to repeat this again for you guys. If you didn't catch that, being quiet in business doesn't work. To grow your business, you must find ways all the time to be a little louder than others in your field. A little louder than others in your field. That's all you really need to accomplish so that you could stand out, right? And if that still feels uncomfortable, Today, I'll give you something that may feel good and simple and will help you create visibility without feeling pushy or salesy. Um, I'm quoting somebody's comment. Uh, let's see. What did I quote? Oh, okay. 
I caught somebody's comment in the group because I thought that was brilliantly said. She said, I would rather start something totally groundbreaking and get my crowd thinking, wow, you know, something different than try to push and sell. So I think what we're going to be talking about today is definitely about that, you know, about creating something groundbreaking, something um you know, noteworthy, something newsworthy, something that people want to be a part of, right? And before we get started, um, hi, Debbie. Hi, Jamie. Good to see you guys. Um, I want to announce today's winner. So as you know, the daily participation prize uh, is the $500 voucher or gift certificate uh, that can be applied toward any of my business courses, uh, my program launch for our products, my copywriting courses, uh, my marketing courses, anything that you find on my website. A uh, $500 uh, uh, voucher winner today from yesterday's thread is Erna Matt Bellinger. So if you are Erna and you're watching this, message me privately and I'll tell you how to claim your prize. Congratulations, Erna. All right. Oh, and by the way, tomorrow we are, um, I'm, I'm holding a full length um, live training, a webinar training, uh, where I'm going to be talking about the one, the single strategy that I believe is going to top all of the ones that we've been discussing so far. It's going to be um, above and beyond. It's going to uh, allow you to play bigger and be a little louder, right, without feeling salesy and pushy. So you definitely don't want to miss it. And tomorrow I'm actually going to be um, offering a grand prize. Uh, so you you uh, definitely don't want to miss it. The grand prize is actually a very cool opportunity for visibility. It's a spot, a guest spot for an interview with me, uh, which will be publicized to 20,000 coaches, authors, speakers, experts, entrepreneurs, and service professionals. So one lucky person will win this grand prize tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to actually do something really fun tomorrow uh, to make sure that um, it, it's going to be a very easy win for somebody, but you have to pay attention tomorrow to how to win it. All right. So today's, this is our fourth key to be positioned, to position yourself as the go-to expert, and that is bring other experts together because go-to experts bring other experts together. Um, you know, when you surround and associate yourself with other people who are experts in your industry, other people are start, starting to see you as not only a go-to expert, but as an industry leader, as a mover and shaker, right? Somebody on the cutting edge. And it's so much easier to grow your business, to attract clients, to get other opportunities when you're positioned this way, right? And so I have offered to you four different ways to position yourself Um at the center of influence. So there are four ways to bring other experts together. I'm sure there are probably others, but these are the ones that are really uh, big ones and they're popular and they're proven to work in the expert industry where people are selling expertise. So the first one is create your own networking group, right? A networking group is like a meetup group. If you're familiar with meetup, <laughs> I've attempted to start actually two meetups and for whatever reason on the east coast where i live there are not a lot of online entrepreneurs um i called mine on online entrepreneur mastermind and i remember the first time i decided to close it down is when somebody wandered from across the street into the, our meetup and said yeah i work across the street and i heard you have some networking meetings so i'll stop by and the guy was totally not an online entrepreneur he was just working across the street curious about networking <laughs> so be careful what you start make sure that whatever you start is designed to attract the people that you want right the movers and the shakers and and or your ideal clients. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, the second kind is your own mastermind group. This is where you're bringing other experts in your niche together. The magic behind a mastermind group is actually very powerful because um, as you're growing and building um, and inviting people to your mastermind group, what you are essentially doing is creating your own circle of 
influence, your own circle of potential affiliate partners, joint venture partners, people who are going to refer business to you, people who will uh, be familiar with your expertise and will respect you. And so they're influencers, right? So you're becoming an influencer as the organizer of um, your own mastermind group. Um, another one, another idea, which is number three, is hosting your virtual summit in your niche, which is essentially you inviting other guest experts and you are interviewing them uh, and everybody's promoting the summit to their audiences, right? To their uh, mailing list or social media following. Um, if you were late, I was just talking about the, the book that I did not author, but I did write the forward to the multiple streams of virtual event income, virtual summits. This, this book is essentially about virtual summits. Um, and I love it because, uh, the idea it, it's a little bit outdated. It's about, I think it's like eight years old. There's a lot that has changed since this book was released. And, you know, there's been thousands of virtual summits since then. Uh, but I love this idea because, um, you know, summits have been around, virtual summits have been around since 2005, since the very first telesummit that I conducted in the coaching industry but it literally exploded and i saw a lot of people were interested in doing a virtual summit but they weren't sure how to do that so one of the ways to think about a virtual summit is you are inviting people from your industry into your playground i love the idea of creating your own playground and inviting other people to play in it right that's what a virtual summit really is um, and it's really cool for people who don't like to travel. Um, so everybody loves the idea of just being able to do this from home. So it's a really neat way to bring other experts together and position yourself as the go-to expert. And then the last idea that, you know, the last strategy for positioning yourself as the go-to expert at the center of influence is holding a live conference in your industry. And, and I don't necessarily mean a workshop or a seminar. This is a bit different, right? A live conference essentially means that you're bringing people, experts, guest speakers to speak to your audience. You can speak there, but you also bring other resources. Maybe you bring um, exhibitors, vendors, um, sponsors, you're bringing other experts, you're bringing people together and you're putting yourself right smack in the middle of it. A live conference obviously has, you know, more hard costs. It's a little bit more expensive than a virtual event, which is uh, very affordable. But a live conference is also a way to position yourself, right? Um, and so today's homework, today's question for you was, whether you want to do a mastermind event, uh, I'm sorry, a mastermind or a networking group or a virtual event or a live event, what would be the theme that would position you as the go-to expert on your topic, in your niche? And then I give you examples because a theme is, is an important thing. It's like whatever theme or name that you come up with, you're, you're going to attract a certain group of people, right? Um, and the examples I gave you uh, are like songwriters networking group, medical entrepreneurs mastermind, real estate sales success workshop, raw food virtual summit. So all of these that I'm mentioning as examples, you can tell who, what kind of person they will attract, right? Songwriters, medical entrepreneurs, real estate um, investors, raw food uh, passionados, right? So let me see if there are any questions or comments while I am um, talking about this. Hi, Rosemary. Um, Julie, you guys are talking to one another. There's yay, woohoos, and bring it to mama. Whatever you're talking about, <laughs> there's like a parallel conversation happening. Um, Joanne, good morning. Julie, uh, Zola, hello. All right. So... Let me talk about something. So I've been watching everybody's responses and I want to comment on some of them just to course correct, right? Because I've been watching your responses and I love the different ideas for a group or event or summit that you're thinking of organizing. And what I am noticing is that some group names or event names are too much focused on your specific topic. 
and it shouldn't. And, and I know that will be confusing to you. So let me, let me give you an example. So a relationship coach, starting a relationship coach's mastermind is a great idea. And it has, you know, a place for that, but it serves a different purpose, right? Like brainstorming and helping each other grow. Other relationship coaches get together. This is not quite the group or the event that I am talking about because it will not allow you to position yourself in your industry as the go-to expert on your topic, right? What you want to do instead is surround yourself by people who specialize in other topics but still serve the same tribe, the same community of people, right? So think bigger. What theme can you go with that would allow you to um, invite other experts who are not your direct competitors, right? So going with the example of relationship coaches mastermind, um, what if instead you decided to start a mastermind for experts and service providers who work with step families? Then you can have a relationship coach, which might be you if you're a relationship coach. You might invite therapists, educators, in other words, experts in different areas around the challenges that a step family may be dealing with. Parenting, right? There's another one. So if you're a relationship coach and you want to start a, a, a relationship coach's mastermind, do you see how you're actually positioning yourself on the same um platform as all the other relationship coaches and as i said you can absolutely do that you can even charge for relationship uh, coaches mastermind uh, and you know exchange best practices but that's a different kind of group does that make sense this distinction right yes madeline parenting i was thinking of you when i thought of step family who else serves a tribe a community a group of step families well parenting experts for sure um educators uh, relationship experts um you know all kinds of experts that you can bring into that group um, um anita is asking how do you bring people together if you are a nobody uh, and you have a tiny little list. I actually talk about that tomorrow. So be sure to, to um, attend tomorrow's class. I'm going to keep you, um, you know, keep this a surprise for just one day longer. Definitely come tomorrow. Um, Julie says, we should think of how to set ourselves on the same platform as other people. Yes, as other people who serve the tribe, the same tribe as you are serving, right? And Madeline says, you are not a nobody. What a great comment to make. You're just the secret. Yes. Um, and if you're using, uh, you know, the, the lessons that I'm going to be teaching you today and tomorrow, I guarantee you that people are going to want to play with you. People are going to take notice. You are going to stand out simply because of the playground, playground or a platform that you're creating for people to be a part of, right? Uh, there's a lot of people who launch their business from scratch with some sort of a big idea, with creating something that other people gravitate toward, right? It doesn't matter where you are starting. What matters is how you're moving forward with this, right? Um Yes, um, Celeste is a good point for non-competing but complementing. Absolutely. Um, will you also teach us how we will be viewed as the expert? Yes, the strategy I'm going to be teaching tomorrow is definitely going to not only position you as the go-to expert, but as the um, celebrated expert. My coach always used to tell me, Milana, you want to be a celebrated expert. And that always made me uncomfortable because... The word celebrated and the word celebrity, doesn't it make you feel a little bit like um, vain, right? Like, I want to be a celebrity. That's not quite what he meant. But celebrated means that you are seen as the person who is absolutely trusted, proven advisor. That's what a celebrated expert means. And you're celebrated by the people who respect you, by the people who invite you for different, you know, for speaking gigs, for visibility opportunities, to be on their shows, right? To be a guest on their uh, virtual summits. So that's why you're celebrated. 
Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I think it means you're confident that's different than vain. Very true. It's all about how you perceive that word and how you perceive yourself. Uh, Michael says, I have yet to create my first group coaching. Do it. <laughs> Do it, Michael. Um, let's see. Hi, Carol. Good to see you, too. It's been a while since you've been in Baltimore. Yes, it's been a few years. Um, Debbie says, will you please go deeper on a mastermind group? The purpose, what do the experts get out of it? So again, a mastermind group can have different reasons for it and have different purposes for creating a mastermind. One type of a mastermind is the one I was giving you an example earlier, where a relationship coach would create um, a mastermind group for other relationship coaches to share best practices. But it doesn't serve the purpose of positioning, right? It just serves a practice of brainstorming, having your colleagues and peers share their biggest lessons with you, support you, and so on. The kind of mastermind that I'm talking about um, is a little bit different. It's, it's more about bringing people together who all serve the same group of people. So I'm going to share something that I wasn't planning on sharing, but I think it's going to be useful. I'm a member of a mastermind um, it's a high-level mastermind of people, of entrepreneurs and experts and teachers and trainers who all serve the community, the tribe of coaches, authors, and speakers, right? The person who organized that, that, that mastermind is seen as the leader of the leaders. Everybody loves him, supports him, promotes him, right? Some of you may know who I'm talking about, but the idea here is that he brought us all together because we were all serving the same audience. And that is the key point that I want you to take away from this, right? Um, let's see, hopefully I answered your question, Debbie. Uh, let's see, there are any other ones. Um, I love being celebrated for the software I have created for MLM communities and entrepreneurs. Very cool, Donna. Um, I, Michael says, I definitely would love to be a celebrated expert. I think I've developed the know, like, and trust factor already. So the difference between um, just having the know, like, and trust factor and being a celebrated expert, let me say that again. I'm swallowing words. The difference between being, you know, having the know, like, and trust um, factor and being the celebrated expert in your field is visibility. Not just visibility, but massive visibility, right? We're going to talk about that tomorrow, how to create that, like, bam, explode your visibility. Because there's one strategy that is unparalleled to any other. And I can't wait to share this with you. Um, let's see. Zola says, I have had a woman's, women's small business development mastermind. What I discovered is that free offering of my facilitation service and expertise got no commitment. The members have to have some skin in the game um, is my feeling. So, yes, you can absolutely charge for your mastermind. The mastermind that I'm a member of, I think we're paying like um, $3,000 a year. So it's a very low um, entry fee. However, to get into that mastermind, you need to be at a certain level in your business. And you have to apply and get approved and have references of people who know you. So it's not a free for all. And it's not even a $3,000 mastermind. You need to, to have and be so much more to prove that you have been in business at a certain level of um, development. All right. I want to give you an example because we're almost out of time. Um, Make sure I didn't miss anything. Just looking through your comments, guys, here. Okay, I, th I don't think I missed any questions. So, yeah, um, I want to give you an example of a comment that I really like that stood out to me today. Um, it's, it's from Marlis Arnold. She says that for the past few years, I've toyed with the idea of hosting a trade show technology virtual summit where I would interview vendors 
who provide all kinds of tools for exhibitors and show organizers, right? She says, this would position me as someone who knows everyone. Yes, that is a great way to think about because you wanna be seen as a resource, right? So she says, I wanna be seen as someone who knows everyone in the industry and to be the kind of a concierge who can put clients in touch with all the right resources. Uh, when you are running a, a networking event, when you do a mastermind, when you run a virtual summit, when you li have a live conference, you are automatically seen as a resource. And what a great positioning to be seen as. You are the resource. You are the go-to person, um, which consciously or subconsciously elevates you above every other provider, above every other competitor, if you use that word in your jargon, or, or above every colleague or peer in your field, right? So remember, you know, by the way, Marlies is, uh, I looked uh, her up on Facebook and I noticed that she is an exhibit marketing strategist. So her ideal clients go to trade shows and they set up exhibit booths. So they need all kinds of help, resources, ideas, right? So she would be creating, she would be attracting other people who serve the same tribe. Hey, Marlis, you're here. Uh, what was it about the mastermind that motivated you to join? How did he attract members? Um, this mastermind, Marlis, was all about um, um, helping each other reach our tribe. So. You know, at the end of the day, it's a joint venture mastermind. These are joint venture relationships, right? Um, so we were helping each other reach a wider audience within the same um, tribe. Uh, Celesta says, yes, my events are now in fifth year. And um, aspect of my overall big vision is mission of love project. Is awesome. Okay. Um, awesome. My mastermind would be you are your own healer doctor. So let me address that for a second. Yes, um, the healing. I remember you said um, healing mastermind. Um, keep in mind that you're not just creating a workshop or a product where you teach your expertise. This is not the goal of creating a group or an event in your industry, right? You are bringing other experts together who serve your niche. So you're seen as a mover and shaker in your industry, which means that you need a bigger theme. You need a bigger vision so that your topic, your expertise could fit into it very nicely, right? All right, we're out of time. Um, so tomorrow I will be talking about the, this single best strategy that will put that will position you as the ultimate go-to experts. And I really believe it is the best way to stand out in your niche right now, especially if you do it right. This method that I'm going to be talking about, it's a strategy that is completely unparalleled to anything else out there because it grows your business. I count it in at least 20 different ways. And it accomplishes it really, really well. So definitely come to the class tomorrow, Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, just like we've been meeting every day this week. But this will be a class. So it'll last about 60 to 75 uh, minutes uh, of training. Um, awesome. Thank you, Marlis. I uh, guess I know what my next project will be. Yes, I think I know that too. All right, guys. Um, Definitely think about what we were talking about today. See if you can come up with a theme that might make sense to you um, to position your topic within a bigger theme, right? Um, whether it's a group, an event, a mastermind, a virtual summit, it doesn't matter. You want a theme that allows you to be positioned within that theme as an expert. All right. I think I shared everything I, I uh, was planning on today. And Ernest says, can't wait until tomorrow's class. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye, everybody.